homes that I see here. Um, thought I might pop into this little aquaponics setup I got going uh, just to show everyone what's up. Uh, it's This is a very old system and it's just kind of running on autopilot. I only got a few things in there because I only got two fish in there, two goldfish. The tilapia that were in there, I had hundreds. You know, it's just crazy how fast they, they uh, populate something. And uh, it got cold here. I had this outside and they died. These are Mozambique tilapias, California had, I guess, maybe a colder year than normal, so a lot of them died that way. A few that hung on, I kept them, and they ended up dying this last year. Well, two years ago they all died, and then one year ago the last one died. I only got two goldfish left. But it's kind of like the potting bench. And um, I just kind of throw stuff in there and see what happens when I try and flat it out. Uh, and it's also a shell. So <clears throat> the screen's here to keep the raccoons and the possums out. They love digging in aquaponics beds that they can get to get into. It's crazy how much they love that shit. They'll come out on your porch and dig through it with you standing there. They don't care. <clears throat> Right here, we have a uh, Natal, Natal plum in our front yard, and I thought it'd be pretty cool to get some cuttings going. I've never tried this before. I'm just sticking it in the dirt and seeing what happens. I'm gonna get another set, stick them into the aquaponics, and try and get them rooted that way, and we'll see what happens when that happens. So I've got seven, seven cuttings, and they were all, Vigorously growing shoots, big thick stalks. <clears throat> and then next to it is a fig plant. I got some figs. Well, I was at this place named after the fig tree in Spanish, Higuera. Higuera Ranch. And uh, I took some cuttings off it <clears throat> and I stuck them in the aquaponics. They never grew. So. I pulled them out after I started seeing mold, and then right after I pulled it out, that little fig plant started, popped up. <clears throat> so I'm kind of excited about that. It, it also could be a seed from my fig tree, but either way, it's cool. I got a fig, new fig plant. Well, that guy can fly. <clears throat> I don't bother clipping any of their wings. They're not, uh, they're not gonna be around much longer to bother me with this fence uh, saving up to get a electric fence premier one netting fence and I'd like to uh, set up some kind of a gate here that hopefully automatic but I'm not really trusting the automatic thing um, but it's worth a shot for the ease of it maybe something for vacations only I don't know but a door here and then kind of a rotational paddock system so one little tunnel I think I'm gonna use my failed experiment at my annual garden for the chicken tunnel it's a PVC hoop with uh, stucco wire on it that I got for free from the neighbor uh, but I want to run that out and do a kind of a, a paddock here around the central just unwatered desert jungle happiness um, one over here, another one covering this giant tree cave. It's also their, it's probably their second favorite spot. But they get in that tree cave. There's tons of stuff on the forest floor. It's dark and shaded in the whole place. Nice little place to take a dust bath. <clears throat> and then a third one on the, the back side of the yard. So, I'm not 100% sure how to do that yet, but it requires an electric fence just because they don't respect this one at all and if I put something that's this short and not electrified you're just gonna walk all over me. <clears throat> There's Biff. I try to hold him every day, keep him tame. He came from a girl who did a 4-H club thing with him. I don't know if he placed or not. I didn't really ask him that. I didn't care. I just, I, he was big and real nice buff Workington rooster. And pretty happy to get this old stock out of the way and start focusing on his babies. Remember our previous rooster, Marty McFly? 
he is the father to all of these new chickens. Uh, a few of them we're going to keep. There's some potential olive eggers. So we're going to keep those at least till they, till we see what their egg color is. And then if their egg color is not a, it's horrible, then they'll probably meet the same fate as their brothers and sisters. And if, uh, if it's okay and, it, and they lay a good amount of eggs, then she can stick around because we like the variety. We're mainly going to be focusing on buff Orpingtons in the future. <clears throat> But uh, some of the buff crosses from our previous rooster, Marty McFly, we're going to keep all of those to try and not really pollute the genes, but just kind of using traits that we like. So we're kind of hoping to get some darker eggs from that Wellsimmer buff cross. And... Um, the next rooster that comes down the line, because I think we're gonna do roosters, maybe new one every two years or every year, something like that, just to keep it mixed up. And, but I want a bunch of crosses between him and the olive eggers or the Easter eggers before he goes. And then I also want some pure buff Orpingtons and we'll just kind of keep that flock going and um, we're not really tied to buff Orpingtons, but we, we like them a lot right now. There might be some, some other genes going in there, depending on how we feel that year. Maybe we'll throw in some uh, black copper Morans. Um, I, those are known to be pretty big and uh, produce quality eggs, so <clears throat> we'll think about that. Got some action going on over here. This is a... Americana Wellsimer Cross, an olive eater, and she has caught a lizard. I don't think she's going to let us get too close because she's very happy about that. Here's our another fig tree we have. This was a goat fig that I cut down and it just popped back up like it, like it didn't even do anything. <clears throat> we have another one in the back corner, but both of these I, I cut down or cut back. The other one I cut back, this one I cut down, was because the figs aren't any good so <clears throat> sometimes they go hermaphroditic and uh, kind of ruins the flavor they just never produce fruit they just go straight to seed or uh, it was a seed from some fig that some bird ate 50 years ago and now it's here so I kind of thought about maybe doing some some grafting on this just because it's got a huge rootstock in here. And I just thought it was a menace, but now I'm kind of excited about it. <clears throat> so this thing is thick. I mean that that is that's a size 12 shoe. So this is 13 inches in diameter. Actually, sorry, that's a, that's a size 13 shoe, but the shoe is 12 inches. So, just make sure you guys don't think I got little feet. This is our Santa Rosa Plum. It's a drooping type of tree. Let me get you out of the sun here. And this one's going to grow up and over. So it'll be like a little umbrella here. That's why it's so much taller than the other ones. The, the idea for these fruit trees is I need to get in here and start pruning them because uh, they're getting a little too wild, but I, I just wanted them to get established and get a nice root mass, so I let them grow however they wanted, and I also left these alone. These are just native plants that were there. I'm just going to leave them there and keep them trimmed back, make sure they don't outcompete the fruit trees that are around, but it's my... It's my source of fertilizer, chop and drop. These uh, olive sprigs, this mass that's popping out here, that's another pretty big tree and it covered quite a bit of space. And I, I think I just got tired or someone called me in for dinner right before the whole thing got chopped down. But uh, I'm kind of glad it didn't because it kind of creates a kind of a, almost a privacy fence or something. So if I can get it to grow that way, and I'll just kind of head it back as it goes and use it for chop and drop and try and do something with it. This 
this needs to be might look like it need to be more managed but i think it's pretty good the way it is a lot of this brush back here i got plans for this for some biochar and i'm not going to do it all, all this brush actually i was trying to chip it i was trying to uh, bury it in the hugo culture which i'm gonna i might save some to do but it's already pretty dry and it's going to make good biochar so i think i'm just going to burn as much as i can get a bunch of charcoal here in the center have a pit here and we'll just do it right there but it's uh, too dry part of the too dry part of the season and we need to wait until it's it's gonna have some rain either some rain in the forecast for a few days or you know right after it rains and I'll try and cover it but I just don't have that many tarps I know this is a chickens week 14 update but since we're nearby we'll We'll talk about the hoover culture. This needs some more wood chips on it. I got this wicker fence braided around here and, and that's going to hold all these wood chips in and make it more of a raised bed type of feel. Uh, I wanna come back and trim these back a little bit. Uh, but, and then there's also gonna be wood chips mounted along the whole way here. So I'm, if I find some logs that aren't really good for hoop, for, uh, biochar I'll line them up here and then mount it up with wood chips into a uh, mound obviously but before the the chips get there there's going to be a, a black pipe drain all along here with the, with a few dumping points and that's going to be our gray water for our laundry room that's going to be moved outdoors got a lot of plans here and uh oh look A mouse got in, but a mouse could not get out. This is my black soldier fly larva bin and previously a worm bin. It's probably nothing right now except a rat trap. Um, so far this is tied for a second for most mice caught with a single fixture. I got some, some mouse traps and I got a couple good ones, they're lucky traps. They've caught two mice, but second place is only one mouse. And uh, right now the bathtub's giving it a, a real good run for its money. Here's our apple orchard with comfrey. I planted comfrey at the base of every fruit tree and only some of the roots took. Got quite a lot of grass here. Um, I think I'm okay with that. I think once summer's over, I'm gonna fence the chickens in here and let them go to town. And uh, I'm hoping that the, the rhizomes for my asparagus do not get uprooted. If you think, if you think that's gonna happen, you know, give me a, give me a comment. Tell me, no, don't do it. But I think it'd be a good idea, they'll eat the, the come free down to the nub and it should come back and all this grass will be gone I think it might be too high for the chickens to get going on it but I think um, if I uh, maybe cut it down a little bit I don't know I don't want to have to come in here and mow it I'd rather just let the chickens do it maybe they'll pick away at it on the edges and just kind of stay in the center here's our uh, watermelon it's going a little slow I, I don't really know much about the seasons of any of these plants so I should look them up but I just plant them in the ground and and it's kind of fun just to see what happens so I figure it's better just to do it and then figure it out as you go than to read up about it and never do anything this is a pumpkin volunteer uh, we had a little pumpkin smashing party out here last Halloween and we only got one plant which is kind of crazy because there was pumpkins all over the place just smashed seeds going chickens probably had their fill but they've also pooped them all over the place so I figured I'd get more pumpkins someplace let's go find some chickens
guys like it out here, gals, she'll be one of the ones I keep, probably no matter what, because uh, she's pretty nice to me. Um, I've caught her a few times. She lets me catch her and just pet her every time I do. Here's our grapevine that's doing really great. Um, trying to route it on these trellises here. I, I cut back some of it, little stray things. I want to focus growth just on the, the laterals to fill it out. And we'll probably just go halfway. I had two others that were here, one was here, and the other one's over here. You, the remnants of it is still there. It, it just couldn't take it. Um, probably the wrong time of year to plant. I should have done it right at the beginning of the winter because uh, it dried out. This one was the best one and then the chickens kept eating it. So now I got to protect it and it's coming back. And I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Our cacti, columnar cacti, who I don't know the names of them. Um, they're both producing. This one's got a little bit more spines to it. This one is really nice. Like when it's when it's ready, the skin pops and you just it just peels itself. It's it's awesome. <clears throat> My roosting apparatus has fallen. And um, it's either it's fallen, so now all the chickens are roosting in the coop and only a few are out here, or it's they just went in there on their own because there's two or three that sleep out here and they're fine. I've removed the blocking bar from the higher protein feed. I want all the chickens to get in there because there's so few that I know I'm going to keep no matter what and there's so many that have a potential to be dinner so I want them all to be big and some of the the bigger uh, cockerels and pullets can't fit between that bar anymore so <clears throat> Figure I'd give everyone a shot at it. Everyone's got free range or free choice of the uh, all flock feed, which is also higher protein. So I've, I've noticed a step up in, in average weights, just not by weighing them, but just by looking at them. They've all gotten bigger, faster, these last couple weeks since I switched to the new food. This is one we'll be keeping, this is Weedy. She's our Wellsomer hen. I like the Wellsomer lines, but her eggs have gone before she went broody, they were they were extra dark, the speckles, and they look great. But right now, they're just barely darker than a, than some of the Buff Orpington's eggs. So it's a little sad. I can still tell which one's hers because it's the darkest one, but and it's just not. It's it's a hatchery chicken. She's not bred for color egg color. I think we're going to. Give all the Jersey Giant and Jersey Giant kids, um, they're, they're all gonna get slaughtered, I think, because the black coat, it doesn't seem like they do too well in the heat with that. And we got a lot of heat here. We do have a lot of shade and they have a lot of space, but um, don't really like the egg color. They're not particularly friendly. They are big, so it's more of a meat bird anyway. But they do also lay a lot of eggs. It's just, I don't know. I think we can do better with the Buff Orpingtons than I don't want to have a bunch of eggs that I gotta take a guess whether they're Jersey Giants or Buff Orpington eggs when I, when I do my selection for the Ruby Hens. <clears throat> it's been kind of a hot day. We're, we're coming into another heat wave. So all these birds are probably right back where I left them. They're just hanging in the shade. Uh, here we got pluot, apricot, apricot here. This one's surrounded by the most trees and they like it. It stays cool in here and it's the biggest tree. So I figure it's the biggest um, trunk. So that's why I stuck it here. 
Um, we're gonna need some to trim some branches up here because this guy's getting shaded out. He's wanting to grow this way, and that stuff's getting into the power line too. So we'll have to take that out. This is our Americana. She seems to be the very bottom of the pecking order. She's the smallest, and she's the only one, the only one with the poke back. So. We, but we like her. She gives uh, she gives us some nice green eggs, and she doesn't eat too much. And can't really ask for more than a better egg layer. Well, I think we'll go ahead and end that here. I uh, didn't really do too much talking about chickens, but uh, kind of excited about the the other stuff stuff going on, new projects and everything. So stay tuned for that. And uh, make sure and check out the other chicken videos if you're just getting this one first time. There's 13 more before this. You can watch these guys grow up. We're in week 14, and I've, I've decided we're going to stick it out till the 16th week. We'll go to the end of what I said at the beginning to do. Um, but I, I think these are, they're kind of petering off on how much more they're going to be growing. They're already pretty big. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure and like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.